In this video, we'll be finishing the dashboard, tweaking it, and adding some minor improvements here. When we have an empty prefix form here, as you can see, it's red, which means it's invalid, and we can't save. There's a lot you can do with this, and it works for all inputs. Let's get started. Hello there. So we left off with our little dashboard here. Not much going on. Now, so we want to make sure this works. So I press save. Okay. Now, we have an issue here. What is the issue? Let's refresh real quick. And let me delete this, okay, so that we can see it. So, I select nothing here and save. We get this includes error. What does this mean? It's coming from here, so blacklisted channel IDs is actually null. Because it's being replaced in guild routes. In dashboard routes. Sorry. It's being replaced here, and the rec body... Blacklisted channel IDs is undefined because no value is selected, so it's an, it's just undefined. <laughs> so what we can do is add option value equals here, and then selected. Now what will that do? Hold on, let me delete this. Not quite sure. Oh, it will just add an empty value, now that is one way you could do it, but we're actually going to use a an input, a hidden input, and the value is going to equal this, empty string, and now this is the best way I found that works, I guess, so name equals blacklisted channel IDs, and also I have another thing to say, but let's see what that does. Okay, so we select one value. Now, we're going to save. Now, what is that value? Is it an array or is it a string? Let's find out. It's an array. Good. Now, before, when I was testing with this, if we remove this hidden value, which is the backup value, it's actually adding in a string to it, and it enforces that it's an array. That's the best way i found that works. So if we hide this backup value, it doesn't actually do anything, so that's fine. And then we select one value here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see the IDs is actually not an array. It's just a single string. Now, you could add this, and another way to do it is add angled brackets here, and that would fix that. So it's either an array, or it's undefined. Now currently, if we remove that and this, it would be an array if there's more than one. If there's one, it will be a string. Otherwise, it will be undefined three different types. <laughs> I think that's a bit weird though. So, if you have this, you don't need the angle brackets. That's something to keep in mind. So we're actually going to put the angle brackets there though. So that's fine. We can do that. Now let's see. Let's try again. We, we're going to select two. We expect to see three items in the array. And we do. Cool. Okay, so, let's add some validation here. So what do I mean by validation? Well, now, we, we there must be a prefix here. If there's not a prefix, how are we going to type commands? Good question. So, now with HTML, we can actually add some prefixes here, or attributes, should I say, to the prefix. Now, you can search on Google the now Mozilla doc documentation, so 
HTML attributes, input attributes, and here's some, but you can look at Mozilla Docs, probably the best. Now we have some more attributes, you can, there's loads of them, there's a lot of them, there's, there are a lot. <laughs> you can look into more of them, and it will limit some values you can have. Cool. When you're going to use required and max length, so the required means they have to have a value here, could be anything. So we're going to have max length of 5, so the max length they can have is 5. And this is also enforced in the HTML input, so we can't have more than 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Cool. Now, how do we know when the form is under is actually invalid? So, Control Shift J. Okay, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is select this input. So, with jQuery input name equals prefix. Now we can have we can get the DOM element and type. Type a special method called check validity. Now this is on the DOM element, the default one, not on jQuery. So this is invalid. Now if we type A, it's it's actually valid. Now let's try something here. Let's see if the max length is working. So we can programmatically type val and then two long prefix. And now check if it's valid. See, check validity true. Okay, let's see. False. Okay, it's something to do with updating, <laughs> but it's actually invalid. So the length is too long. Now it's in, now it's valid again. Now I, I'd like to add a red border over the element when it does that. So how do we do that? Good question. Guild.js, let's add, so when we change an input value, so input.onChange or .onInput, which is when we type something or change an input, what do we do? We're going to have a function, so we're going to select this element, and then we're going to check the validity. And that will return if the element is true or false, valid. So, in this case, if it is not invalid, so if it's valid, we want to remove a class from it. So remove class, otherwise we want to add class, we'll add that in a minute, add class. Now, what are we actually adding? We're going to add border, bootstrap, class, border, danger, which is red. So, that will add, remove both, add and remove both classes. Let's see that in action. Okay. So, as you can see, it's valid. We type something. Now we, oh, it's invalid. Very cool. That works. Now, we want to not allow them to to submit, so oh, oh, so it does give a validation error in Chrome. Hmm, that's interesting. But we can also have form, so we can check if the entire form is valid. So if one of these is invalid one of the inputs is invalid, the entire form is invalid. If if one input is invalid, the entire form is invalid. So we can check the validity of the form. And then what can we do? Turn error. We can type. 
we can actually select the button here if we want but then we'd have to edit it in every file but I guess we can just select it like this why not it's one way to do it and then atra now atra it won't do too much I don't think so we can have add atra I believe but we don't even need ternary we can just do this now we're gonna have disabled and then we're gonna have this we're gonna paste this in if the form is valid do not make it disabled there we go type something it's enabled now it's invalid it's disabled very cool now you might prefer it being different you might prefer it like that and that's another option okay so another tweak is if we go into overview I forgot to add an S here and also sidebar let's go in there now what should we do with the sidebar? What is the problem, first of all? Well, this isn't completely centered, so let's add PX1, padding left, right one. Boom. Is that centered? Let's see. Looks centered to me. You can add this drop down menu right class to the navbar, and that will push this here away from being off the screen so it won't be too far off the screen MR2 so we can get rid of that and it will still be fine that's pretty much it now let's give you some ideas of what we can do or what you can do or what we may do depends we can have some graphs here so like this in 2PG we can have some graphs like that that show things we can also have a lot more we can have a lot more inputs I guess there's a lot of room for things to add but that's up to you so we've done the foundation I guess Another thing, let's add some icons here. Hold on, navbar. So let's add some icons to the drop down. So, how do we do that? We're just going to have it inline. I F A S F A cogs, I think. And then user slash, I believe. See how that works? Yep. Yeah. That's also text muted. Cool. There we go. Now, there's this is the foundation. You can build off of it however you want. And that's what we will be doing, though. In, an, in another course and the link for that will be in the description okay there's a lot of cool things you can do with this dashboard so also you can join the server and the link for that is in the description discord.io so adamjr and you can share your creations I guess with this there but that's pretty much it for this series I guess another note is where you can go from now is you can learn angular I guess or a front-end framework like react now Google made react um, angular and and Facebook made react that's the difference and 
That's up to you, really. Let me show you some Angular syntax here. So, it does use a bit of rendering here, dynamic rendering, unlike PUG. But, instead of PUG having, what do they have, one bracket and that, it just has two double brackets, and it's not server-side rendering either. It's done on the client side, believe it or not, through here. There's a lot more to Angular than that, so the learning curves are different. So that's up to you. This was made with Angular, similar to how 1PG is actually. So you can learn a front-end framework if you want, but, and I have a, another tutorial for that. How to set up this dashboard for yourself. So if this gets 30 likes, if this video, then I'll make a course or something similar to that on Angular. So you can learn it through my channel, I guess. <laughs> but I am also working on a Discord clone with Angular. something to keep in mind that's what we could do never know but that's it thank you so much for watching subscribe for more videos like this i guess